everyone, and welcome to this uh, next podcast episode. How are you this morning, Daddy? Good. <laughs> Good. I'm a, a little, little tired this morning. Yeah. I don't really know why, but... I think we both are. I think the horses are, too. We took them on a walk, and they were like, nope. <laughs> uh, so what are we going to be talking about today? Well, <clears throat> I've been jotting down a few ideas over the past week of what, you know, just when something comes up, and it's... Uh, got a handful of topics, but this morning I thought we would talk about expectations. Okay. Headspace had this uh, end quote. After a session, they kind of have a motivational meme, I guess. Mm -hmm. And so this one came up the other day and it says, it's really important to notice what the actual result is rather than just the expectation. Hmm. So I'm going to read that again. It's really important to notice what the actual result is rather than just the expectation. So I found that really timely, largely because uh, just in different Facebook groups and even what you and I have been discussing when it comes to the horses and the training and stuff, you know, people often posting in groups about and I just can't get my horse to go or... Having trust issues. Right. How do I get this horse to trust me and all these sorts of things? And my response is, in a lot of ways, just basically back off of the expectation mm-hmm. and kind of see how the journey unfolds and and prioritize that journey, I guess, before the expectation. That, yeah, that's really, really cool that you say that. Uh, I've with, I mean, I guess an example, just simply training Willow. Uh, well, there's, there's a lot that, uh, I mean, comes with owning a horse as many of you and we know, such as, you know, getting him to the vet and, uh, hoof care and, uh, you know, enough to be able to touch them to take care of their coats and, you know, check them out, make sure everything's okay. Uh, it's, I mean, I've had Willow for, what, since the beginning of May, and uh, we're having her first farrier visit this week, which is going to be awesome, but it's, like, still nerve-wracking for me because I'm still not sure that I have her completely ready. Um, but then, like, that's an expectation that everybody that owns horses have to has to make, uh, and it's got to be, you know, I mean, we have to train them at in within a timely manner to stand still for the farrier so they're so they don't get sick um and so that that's like okay so wait a minute yeah stand for the farrier so they don't get sick what do you mean so they're because okay so a horse that say has overgrown hooves or whatever i mean that can lead to uh medical things like lameness and a few other founder uh well i guess founders a a food disorder that goes into their hooves anyways but there are there are different things issues that they could have with their hooves uh i mean with them being overgrown and not taken care of uh so it's like it's an expectation for all of us to uh how to have our horses be able to stand to get their hooves taken care of so they so they so they don't you know get something up with their hooves or yeah. whatever else. I've I've noticed with you just since we've had Willow that there's been a decent amount of anxiety that you've had, um, not constantly, but you'll kind of amp up your anxiety level over. Um, is Willow ready for the farrier? And yeah. we've. And you guys uh, might have heard or seen some different posts or whatever or videos that Alyssa's done on the Wednesday with Willow um, portions where, uh, because we did have her scheduled for a couple different farrier appointments and those just fell through for whatever reason. So we've got another one scheduled on Thursday coming up, which... um, by the time we release this, uh, might have already been been done. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so what I'm hearing you say is that we have a bunch of expectations, and the farrier is a, a really big one because yeah. if we let the hooves go untrimmed and and not well taken care of, it definitely can cause the horse a lot of problems. And for Willow, especially because 
correct me if I'm wrong, this is kind of like a pivotal point in her care, but also her training and your willingness and ability to start really focusing on um, moving toward writing, yeah. right? So uh, the way I understand it is that you didn't want to proceed with writing before you know that her hoofs are are well trimmed and you her can hoofs, add the yeah. additional weight and stuff that, like that. And then uh, another is getting her trailer ready so I can take her to the vet to get checked out. Uh, and I mean... Well, look, she's a healthy horse that, as far as I'm concerned, she's got some stomach issues, but we've come to the conclusion recently that it's uh, mostly just the lack of exercise. Uh, so we've been starting to, you know, get her more exercise. Because we've so, kind of had, like, pasture pups. Yeah, we have. <laughs> um, and that's so, not to be, like, disrespectful <laughs> to the horses, but we know that horses are made to kind of work and travel miles and miles a day we know in the wild that they travel miles and miles willow a day. was in the wild traveling miles and miles a day for about <laughs> six years of her life i take her out around our property of 10 acres for uh we went around twice and by the second round she was like i don't want to do this anymore and so that's maybe about half three quarters of a mile that we do um, i was yeah, like you used to do this for hours they get really like I just want to go eat. But that's not to say that they, you know, they, they do need the exercise. They're built for it. They need it. It helps their, it just helps their health as far as I'm concerned. Um, but So on this idea of expectations, and so we've, we've kind of broken it out into a few different things. So farrier ready, trailer ready. Riding is a big riding, one too. Riding goes into exercise. And so. For those of you listening who may be thinking about getting a horse or you're dreaming about a, owning a horse someday or partnering with a horse, rather, um, these are some things that like really think about because a lot of times I feel like as the human being, as the superior um, uh, one in the relationship or so-called superior, yeah. uh we really force our expectations upon the horses. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of times that this means exerting undue force and even, um, you know. Taking it too fast. Right. Uh, and I mean, I. And really not listening to yeah. what they're telling us, whether it's their mind, body, spirit. Um, I go back to uh, the. Um, uh, like extreme Mustang makeovers or even the tip training program that they, uh, I mean, they only have the makeovers. It's only what, like a hundred days to train yeah, I think it's 100. to, to mm. completely quote, break a wild Mustang. Uh, and it's really, um, it like, that's interesting because it's, I mean, yes, the trainers are out there like pretty much all day, every day trying to get this horse. I mean, they, they got requirements and I, I don't know them, uh, but it, it's, I mean, they only have a hundred days to do it. My question is, what if the horse, what if the horse is still uncomfortable with the saddle in a hundred days? What, what yeah. if the horse is just completely shut down to the idea of the saddle that she's just standing there, but in her mind, she's like legitimately afraid of it, but she can't show it because if she moves a step, she's going to get whipped. That's kind of, I mean, that's an expectation that people sign up for. And I mean, my opinion is we should take our time and we should listen to the horse before we listen to ourselves and our, our expectations. And, um, and what our, our end goals are. Yeah. How does that in, in your mind, how does that transfer into other day or other areas of life? Ooh, like our personal life? Yeah. Uh, I mean, school. even outside of like animals. And school stuff is like a that. big one. I mean, I'm a high schooler, 10th grade and uh, accelerating and it's, I mean, I have high expectations for not only myself, but my teachers have high expectations of me uh, as, I mean, a 10th grade student. It's, uh, I mean, I, I have projects that are due. I have uh, essays that are due. I have tests that are due. And I have a high expectation of myself to get, uh, get good grades in my class. So how so. does, I guess more specifically, how does working with the horses and managing the expectations and, and allowing the horse to, 
demonstrate their willingness and or ability to move toward your expectations or not, how does that, does, or I guess my question is, does that help you uh, when it comes to other areas of life? Does it help you manage those expectations that you might have of yourself or other people might have of you? Yeah. Well, particularly for myself, I mean, being with the horses, it's really helped calm my anxiety. Uh, And a lot of that is, I mean, like, and I've been really laid back, especially this year with school. As you notice, you know, I'll be out here an hour longer than what I had expected to. Um, Yeah, your anxiety levels with school primarily. So Alyssa is an academic. Uh, I'll, you know, um, praise her for a moment. She's a straight A student, sophomore in high school. Um, sophomore plus, cause you've, you've even got I'm some junior level, <laughs> uh, courses and all straight A's it's online. It's, it's difficult. There's a high workload. She works yes. very hard. Um, but there's been a lot of anxiety around those processes that she's created herself. Yep. And often I've been, Hey, kind of calm down, but just having the dad in the picture or the parents in the picture saying, Hey, calm down. Um, a lot of times doesn't cut it. So what I've seen is a drastic, uh, positive difference just over the past year. Um, and to me, it, it relates to this idea of expectations for even ourselves and how we have that internal chatter and, for me personally, uh, the horses in working with the horses have kind of helped me be more stable and even yeah. across those expectations I have. Um, cause I could bring up my own personal, you know, some of you might know, excuse me, might know that we're, uh, building a house and that's the biggest project that I've ever took on myself. Um, and, uh, very daunting and a lot of expectations and timelines and this and that amongst other things that we're doing, like businesses and just the typical day to day stuff, um, taking time out each day for and with the horses and managing my expectations with them has really had a ripple effect in other areas of my life, yeah. like the house, like, cause I've been really amped up over yeah. it. We, you know, we're going on a few years now of building where when we first started, we naively thought it was going to take months. Yes. <laughs> so that's one area in my life that I think it's really helped. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's important to, I mean, know our limits. Uh, that's one thing I've learned because I, previously have been one to overwork myself to the point where I'm like, I, I'm not hungry when I should be hungry. I'm not eating as much food as I should be eating because I'm so stressed out, amped up and work like literally overworking myself about school. Uh, I mean, and that's like, it's something, and it takes other people to tell me that I'm doing that because I just don't realize I do it. And then by the end of the day, I'm like exhausted and biting everybody's heads off because I'm exhausted and I've overworked myself. Um, so it's, I mean, I think it's really important to understand our limits, uh, and know when enough is enough. And for somebody like me that, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I I speak really well to the horses and I can always tell when we've reached her limit, uh, and her, I mean, Willow, uh, she's the horse that I typically, that I work most with, um, but for me, it's it's still difficult for me to know when my limit is because I just want to keep working and get stuff done. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, through the horses, it's been especially training Willow, who was a wild Mustang. She's really taught me how to uh, recognize when I've reached my own threshold. Uh, and it's really interesting. It, it is. And I mean, so. I, I guess a small example, when we first, when I first started with this positive reinforcement training, uh, and it was, you know, just getting her comfortable with touching a, a handheld target. And at first it was a really, it was a really negative thing to her. And at first, like I had to hold it like 
I had to hold it close to her, but not close to her. So then she would get treated for just looking at the target. Um, and for me, like I kind of related that to, uh, say like a really difficult math lesson. Like I, I, I can't come close to that math lesson cause I'm legit, like I'm afraid of it. It's, it's, it's aversive. It's scary. Uh, and so we take it in small steps and then I do like, you know, I, I do say like an hour, this math lesson, and regardless of how much I got done, I'd go and take an hour long break. Uh, and so I just had to you know, break that down. And that's one thing Willow really, Willow's really taught me through this training and being able to understand when we're, when enough is enough. So all you parents out there, uh, maybe you have some land and you don't have a horse on it, or <laughs> horses, but you have uh, kids who um, you might want to teach uh, some expectations management and reduce some anxiety and stuff like that. Uh, what we're trying to say is that the horses provide a very good avenue for doing so. Um, but I think it could backfire the other direction yeah. uh, for both the horse and the humans, especially when it comes to over exerting our energy toward yeah achieving some sort of predisposed expectation. So we create this expectation and come hell or high water, we have to fulfill it. Yeah. And that can be detrimental for everybody involved. And whether it's a timeline for a competition or some sort of um, training aspect that you want to achieve in a certain time so that you can uh, relish in the success of it or whatnot. Yeah. Uh, our, our message today is just to kind of take it slow, but also have a diff disciplined approach so that you're not just not, you're not just like being lazy about things. Right. Um, and we're not saying that you just totally submit and throw in the towel and say, ah, to heck with, uh, expectations. Yeah. Expectations are good. And they help us plan and they help us, um, well, they help us live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But when we take it to an extreme and it starts generating unnecessary and unhealthy anxieties and stuff like that, uh, cause another thing that, uh, comes to mind that you and I have been talking about recently is just kind of like the physiological effects of different stresses yeah. and stuff like that. Like, uh, you asked me the other day if, um, you know, basically if something going on in the mind can have an effect on the body and, yeah. you know, my, my Vice response versa. was, was absolutely, yeah. you know, uh, what we think, uh, you know, has an effect physically on the body or yeah. the, the body manifests the, those thoughts, um, physically throughout the body so uh when we place a lot of emphasis and focus on fulfilling an expectation no matter what uh, i think we can set ourselves up for failure yeah and, I, I and think, frustration i think that's yeah that's a really interesting topic that you bring up um yeah i mean i've there there have been a few times where i've like missed deadlines for school uh, and it's, I mean, I'm not one to miss a deadline for school. <laughs> like that's not the kind of person I am. Uh, but I mean, through certain, you know, certain things going on in life, that's been something, you know, I guess where I've failed to meet an expectation and the expectation there is getting this one assignment in on time. Um, but, uh, I mean, really thankful for my school that they're just like, they're awesome and they allow me to go at my own pace but back on track it's uh when we do fail to meet the expectation it's important i feel like it's not it's important to uh carry on with life and no matter how big the expectation is so how does that relate to the horse oh. and horse training uh so uh, in so many different ways yeah, so unpack that a little bit from because i like that so, when you miss an expectation you kind of have to carry on and regroup so a really important one. Um, so around when Willow first came home, I want to say about a month or so later, uh, she had an abscess in one of her back 
with one of her back hooves. Uh, and I, I mean, at, at the time we hadn't necessarily, like, we hadn't done any trailer work. She had come to me and I had been, you know, I'd been told, you know, if I apply a certain amount of pressure, she'll walk in the trailer. So I was like, okay, uh, I had called the vet to get her in and, uh, get her checked out for her, whatever was going on with her foot. And at the time I didn't know what it was. I just knew she was limping. Um, and so, you know, I was like, yeah, I can totally get her in the trailer. And, uh, you know, the date came where we were supposed to go take Willow to the vet and we spent like somewhat around three or four hours trying to get this horse on the trailer. And she was like, I mean, I was in tears because I, I didn't want to force her in the trailer. And she like she was afraid. Well, and even trying to force yeah. her because at that time we we did uh, yeah. force her. Yeah. And it just was not working and somebody was going to get hurt yeah and that i mean that's a big expectation i mean when you make an appointment with somebody it's it's i mean for me it's important to be there on time and to Mm -hmm. you know have everything i kind of like to have everything like planned out for the most part and everything you know it just it it all fell apart so and so then my i failed to meet my expectation uh and in in training, you know, I I didn't spend enough time prior to this appointment uh, allowing Willow to get comfortable with the trailer. So I had to make it. I had to make a call to the vet and say, "Hey, I there's no way I'm getting this horse safely on the trailer to get to you today." Uh, and thankfully, he's awesome. He uh, we set up another day for him to come out here and check on Willow, and everything was fine. Um, but yeah, so that was a really important thing. Say if if that was an emergency and he couldn't have come out, like that would have been a really bad uh, expectation to fail at. Um, and which is one reason I've been working with Willow every day on the trailer for a little while. Um, but so in the training aspect, what what do I do in that in that scenario? Um, I breathe and I. You know, I say, well, okay, so how, how, because Willow is a big animal, she's, I mean, she could kill me in an instant, let's be honest here, uh, how do I keep myself and her safe and as comfortable as possible, uh, and in that very moment, it was, uh, not getting her to the, to the vet that day, it wasn't an emergency, uh, so we, we ruled that out, we said that's, that's good, she can and, wait. And to be clear, and not to throw you under the bus yeah. on this, but. Uh, you didn't come up with those ideas on your own. No. Um, I have a hard time with failing at expectations. I don't like failing at expectations. Well, <laughs> and again, to be fair, I don't think anybody yeah. does. Like, I don't. I, I think it's just a matter of knowing and learning and then ultimately applying different techniques yeah. to work through that failure of expectation. Yeah, and this this uh this awesome father <laughs> right. of mine here, uh he he's he's really good at uh at preaching things. Uh preaching, but not necessarily <laughs> following through on my own. Yeah, so. and but then that's where I come in. Hey, uh remember that thing you said two days ago. Right. But uh I mean my point here is he and maybe it's a father thing. I'm not too sure. But he, when he sees me or really anybody like starting to shut down, he, he almost always has really good, like, okay, go take a breath, go chill, and then come back and let's, let's evaluate it and let's figure out how we can get this done or not. But I have a, a hard time way. stepping back in my own way, like when my own triggers are triggered and, um, you know, I'm caught up in the moment of failing my own personal expectations. Uh, I almost need somebody, you know, to make that same point. So, mm-hmm. you know, hey, step back and take a breath, like manage that. And and again, I find that the horse does that. Yeah. Uh, can I yeah. share that story from a couple of days? Yeah. So a couple of days ago, we were out and we had a, a work party. So for the house and there was... a a lot of work going on didn't spend hardly any time at all with the horses other than what we do the couple hours in the morning um but cody had ran out of water at some point and then later on in the day you know he didn't go like all day without water i'm thinking you know a couple hours it was it was 
uh, lower than what he likes. <laughs> and, and then he drank it all. And so I went to get him out in the or, or later in the afternoon. And he just was like, no. And my expectation at that time was like, hey, we're going to go on another walk because you didn't get a whole lot this morning. So I was starting to feel myself force that expectation upon him for his own good. Mm -hmm. You know, not, it's not something that he doesn't need, Yeah. but he was giving me the energy of like something was wrong, but I couldn't quite figure it out. And we both know, and perhaps you listening, you, you know, like regardless of your style or theory of horsemanship or training, um, I mean, we've always been taught from the very beginning, like always listen to the horse yeah. and and to, you know, if there's a problem, say on a ride or whatever, typically it's something with the tack or they're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. something like that. But in this situation, my expectation was so high where I actually found myself applying pressure, you know, to his halter, like, come on. Yeah. Let's go. Like, what? what's the problem? And and then it, it occurred to me at that point, I was like, wait, what am I doing? Like, my humanistic nature just kind of came out and I, I'm going to assert my authority at that point and be like, come on, you're, you're being belligerent or you're not paying attention. What turned out was, uh, and he actually like froze and planted his feet. He's like, I'm not going to really go anywhere because you're not listening to me, Jason. Mm -hmm. So when I stopped for a second and I cleared my mind and I brought my thinking levels down and he took a deep breath and then I managed to get him back in his pen. We didn't even go on a walk, but he walked back in his pen and he was kind of doing like that, you know, that on the ground. I noticed when he's nervous, he'll like look for grass and then he'll like move his lips back and forth on the ground. And he's just kind of like grass snatching and trying to, communicate with me in a way but I put it back in the pen and I walked away and then I came back around because I was just like something's not right look in his water dish and it's dry and I looked at him and I was like oh man Cody so sorry I know you're thirsty I went and got the hose and started filling up his water he took a deep breath started drinking and all was right with the world you know I chose at that time not to take him back out on a walk because I just didn't want to, at, at that time, you know, it was getting dark and whatever. But um, my point is, is that my expectation totally overrode, over, yeah, overrode yeah. the situation and made him feel like he didn't have any sort of communication or choice. So the only thing that he was able to do then was freeze. Yeah. Now. I think I could take this at a much more extreme example, say like the rider who has to get on and ride that day mm -hmm. and ignoring the signs and, and just going forward with that expectation and later gets bucked or kicked off and injured. And a lot of times we get, or I've heard people, not we, but uh, I've heard people get upset at the horse in that way. Yeah. Or make comments like the horse is being disrespectful or the horse needs to learn how to uh, give to this or that. Yeah. When in essence, in my mind, that human being needs to check their expectation and be able to throttle that accordingly. And that doesn't mean don't get stuff done because that would be dumb. Yeah. But it does mean... I guess what I'm trying to say is be open-minded and clear-minded enough to know when you need to throttle back and reevaluate and when you can press forward. Yeah, it's, and it's interesting. I mean, in, in my opinion, the horses are uh, we're we're a partner in this in this life. Okay. We're uh, I mean, the so when when we started this like positive reinforcement training, I. And I mean, my dad's done a little research on the term where the term like a broken horse comes from. I really haven't. Um, but we stopped with the term, uh, you know, they're, they're broke. Uh, and that's why earlier I did put quotations in the, the broke horse. Uh, I don't 
I, I don't like using that term anymore because to me it means shut down and uh, like it just unnoticed. They're, they're broken. Uh, and so I, you know, I, I've watched Black Beauty one too many times and I've kind of come up with the, you know, I'm not breaking you. And I'm I and then there's a book called Making Not Breaking. Uh, but I said, I'm not really making you either. We're, we're a partner because you're helping me just as much as I'm helping you. Um, and that aspect didn't come to me until after I started training this wild Mustang, which is, you know, one of the best decisions I've ever made. I mean, she's, she's my best friend and she, uh, not to say that Willow's always right. And she's, you know, an angel from heaven or whatever, but she, uh, she has her reasons for stopping and freezing or for tensing up or for running away and you know then staring at me. like there, there's always a reason for her quote negative behavior um and she yeah she's taught me so much she's my partner in this in this life and we're gonna be there through our expectations and yeah. uh we're gonna fail but we're also gonna succeed and uh yeah we are gonna fail to make to the uh, do these expectations right but we're also going to have our our successes and uh you know but we're in this together so yeah and so to just kind of summarize and wrap things in up, conclusion <laughs> <laughs> in conclusion for the essay writer over here yeah. um yeah it's just about managing expectations and what we're trying to say is to not over exert your expectations upon your horse and or vice versa and yourself. don't don't let your horse overexert their expectations on you and um, and be in harmony with it and be open and mindful. If we're going to have a whole discussion coming up soon about mindfulness mm -hmm. and how this plays into these things because uh, I am not by any stretch of the imagination an expert at it. And in fact, like just this past week, I could pick up Heck, I think just this morning I could pick up on a number of areas where, like, I should have had more mindfulness. And I feel like I'm a pretty mindful person these days. And so it's a constant journey of um, working toward making it as perfect as it possibly can be. But with each day and just even taking small moments whether it be minutes or hours even uh to just refocus the energy and be more mindful about what we're doing and why and how that affects not only us but our horses uh it makes a whole lot of sense so we'll leave you with with that yeah. so manage your expectations and you know take a step don't be afraid to take a step back and a pause just to reevaluate things and um, anything else for, to add. Thanks everyone yeah. so much for watching and uh, we hope you enjoyed and we will see you again next week. All right. Bye. <laughs>